Chapter 16, Flora. Excerpt from the Citizens' Assembly on the Raising of Taxes on the Gridlock. Report number 138. Testimony from Randomly Selected Citizen, Mr. Zane Gott. Based on what I've heard, there are some here that are against the tax raise because it would destroy the mid-levels and the trunks. You also have to consider the normal lifestyle businesses that have been built into the gridlock. These have existed long before the trunks and the mid-levels and deserve to be kept alive. These are your neighborhood coffee shops, your restaurants, your hair salons, your libraries. They define the communities. Raising the tax rates will set many of these communities back for years. For what? The next day, Flora found herself in a ramen joint on top of a double-decker bus in a cute area of the city with vines and greenery flossing between the skyscrapers. The smells of ramen were accentuated by a nearby fort-like coffee shop built over adjacent cars. Among the vines that had stretched their way down, birds were swooping about, chirping. She was confused. When she asked her mother after the press event whether Sonny looked like her father, Madeira just frowned. Was her mind playing tricks on her? She didn't know, and yet, when he sat down next to her, her body still responded with the same shock. Hey, Flora said. Not someone of many words still, that's good. Hey to you too. You ordered for us, right? Flora nodded. Okay, I know there's a lot to do, so I won't be long. I have a strategy. I'm telling you right now, I will follow this strategy in the first race. If you doubt me and think I'm trying to fool you, just realize that it's not worth my time. If you follow along, you can help, and I can help you. Flora heard him, but her mind was stuck. She wanted to know what answers he harbored. She simply nodded. He continued, So the run is around the dome. Running closest to the dome is obviously the fastest, but also the most crowded. Running further away takes longer, but with less chance of bumps and tackles from other runners. My strategy is simple. I will run at a point slightly in the middle to primarily keep boxing the other runners in, sandwiching them. The chances of stumbles and falls increase dramatically. This strategy works substantially better if there's more than one person forming a wedge, such that no one can run ahead or readily escape. I've talked to Buck Chassis. He is in. Are you in? If you are in, we can train this wedge a few times. If you are not in, you know what I will do. I have nothing to lose. Flora pondered. Sonny came across confident and certain, which to Flora meant that he thought this through extensively. She tried to poke at this veil. This isn't some game theory you are doing, some game of chicken? Sonny smiled. He was about to talk when their ramen arrived. He unsheathed his chopsticks and dug in. Flora did too. The thing is, Flora, you wouldn't know, but I'm telling you the truth. I've got nothing to hide. Flora winced at that statement. Of course you have things to hide, Sonny. You told me there's more to your story. What is it? Who are you? I hide nothing. I'm now Sonny Augustus, but I was someone else. I changed my name a few months ago. You would want to know why. I'll tell you why. I came out of jail a year ago, and I felt my old name held me back. My old name was Miles Ward. Here was a man, a mystery, who shared her father's smile, telling her with so much certainty about what he would do. She couldn't help but feel she was talking to her father. Oh, so you are running away from something you did? Why did you enter then? Isn't it a bit stupid if you want your old life to forget you to enter a very public event? What are you hiding? Sonny laughed from behind his chopsticks. <laughs> no, of course not. Not hiding anything. The laugh made Flora heat up, and it wasn't from the spicy ramen. He continued. I took a job with Mason. I had to, to provide for my daughter. I made a mistake, and I paid my dues. Why are you running? What about your daughter? I want to spread hope. I want to show her what a genuine hero is like. I want to show her that one doesn't have to choose a life where you work for an underground trunks lord to make a living. Flora shook her head. She wasn't happy with the answer. I think you're lying. I still think you're hiding something, Flora said, almost spitting broth at Sonny. His smile disappeared. I'm an open book. There's not much more here. I will not waste my time if you doubt what I'm going to do, he said in between slurping some broth. This couldn't possibly be the truth. He was definitely playing a game. 
She couldn't help but wonder what it would feel like if her father were sitting next to her and sharing these answers with her. It raised the hairs on the back of her neck, not only because she wanted to know, but because the answers made her unhappy. She didn't know why. She stood, left her ramen unfinished, and threw a money stick on the bar. You like it when people talk straight. I don't trust you. Sorry, Flora said. You're not even done with the ramen, Sunny pointed out. Flora didn't care. It was time to train, to win, to see her real father. <laughs>